And welcome to Hannity. And today was an unmitigated disaster for Fulton County DA Fawny Willis. Now, in case you weren't able to watch the hours long hearing, what a disaster. Well, we have all the highlights you need to see. But first, let's set up how we got here. Uh, Fawny and the special prosecutor on the Trump case in Georgia, Nathan Wade, her boyfriend, they're accused of having an improper relationship and benefiting from Fulton County taxpayer dollars. Now, Fonnie Willis allegedly hired her former boyfriend, Wade, paid him over $650,000 in the case, and then they used the money to go on a series of luxurious vacations together, cruises in the Bahamas, along with trips to Aruba, Belize, uh, Napa Valley, and that's not all. Wade lacked the qualifications for the job of special prosecutor in the first place. Listen to this. In fact, according to a court filing, there is no evidence that Nathan Wade has ever, ever handled a felony case. So how did Wade end up being appointed to lead one of the most high-profile cases in U.S. history? And by the way, a RICO case, which was ridiculous from the beginning to boot, it is, an it is an exorbitant salary on top of everything else. Now, that is one of the big questions at the center of today's hearing. Now, Willis uh, appointed Wade to lead this case in November of 2021. And in a sworn statement, he previously claimed their romantic relationship began in 2022. Hmm, little problem. According to one of Fonnie Willis's former friends and co-workers, the relationship actually started years before that. As a matter of fact, one of her close friends said, or former close friends, as she said later, used to be a friend, in 2019. Hmm. Who's telling the truth? You decide. There is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Uh-huh. Now, both Wade and Willis later denied their relationship began in 2019. But if true, that alone would throw the entire case into question on top of a lot of other issues, because that would mean she lied to the court. Now, things only got worse when Nathan Wade took the stand when asked if he had visited any cabins with Willis, a cabin, you know, to go on vacation. He paused for over 20 seconds before answering. Watch this. I'm asking if you remember paying for a cabin six months ago in Tennessee. No. You remember booking a cabin? I booked lots of cabins. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever? Ever. No. You've never gone to a cabin with this person? No. Wow. And when confronted about the trips that he booked for the two of them, Wade said that Fonnie Willis always repaid him in cash, which isn't traceable. Well, that's pretty convenient, isn't it? Take a look. You used your business credit card for these trips, correct? I use my business credit card for everything. Okay. I, yes. Um, you used it for your kids' tuition? Yes, ma'am. Used it for personal travel with Miss Willis? Yes, ma'am. You said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? Oh, it was cash. She didn't, she didn't give me any checks. Now, throughout his entire testimony, Nathan Wade seemed very uncomfortable. He was often seen wiping sweat off his face while taking questions. And Fonnie Willis took the stand after Nathan Wade and was pressed on these payments. Here's what she had to say. Take a look. Where did that cash originally come from if it didn't come out of the bank? Cash is uh, fungible. I had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get $50, you throw it in there. When it's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have. 
Now, Willis faced a number of questions about the timeline of her relationship with Wade, and in one very tense exchange, and there were many of those, accused him of making this incredibly sexist comment. Wait until you see this. Take a look. The romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned, yes or no? To a man, yes. Well, to a man, yes. To you, no? She, she's explained this, right. Mr. Sedan. She's explained this. <laughs> and did the, and the, did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that? Ooh. Or was it just a coincidence? <clears throat> Mr. Let's go on and have the conversation. I just ask you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. What does that mean to a man? Yes. Now, what we have shown you so far, it's only the tip of the iceberg from today's bombshell hearing. Let's take a look at some of the other highlights. Watch. I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. I Me, mean, not so much. Oh, yeah, I very much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Ms. Willis, it'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Ms. Merchant's. Thank Ms. You. Merchant's interests are, are contradictory. Contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. He tells me how much it is, and I give him the money back. I don't, just like you're asking me about the money with Robin, I don't do my friends like that. So if you tell me it's a G, then you're going to get $1,000. I think we did two different wine tours that you do, which are pretty expensive. Um, I think I bought him. He likes wine. I don't really like wine, to be honest with you. I like Grey Goose. That was the most expensive thing that I think that we did while we were there. So they would pair, uh, they, they would pair uh, champagne, chocolate, and champagne, chocolate, and caviar. It was a three, and it was like three different things. Sweden, Russia, someplace else. I'll make that up. So let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Right. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Things got so out of control that at one point the judge actually warned Willis. Well, the judge in this case, by the way, I thought was very patient over her conduct on the stand. Watch for yourself. 2020. Did Mr. Wade ever visit you at a place that you He has in? never been to my home in South Fulton. 2020 was before I knew that a phone call was going to be made and I was going to have to abandon my home. As a result thereof, he never visited, lived at, came to, or has seen South Fulton. You qualified that with your home in South Fulton. I'm That's asking, where I lived in 2020. In 2020, did he ever visit you at a place that you resided? Okay. I don't understand. You're about to give me guys. In 2020, so I lived in South Fulton. Okay. That's the only place I lived in South Fulton. That's before I had to abandon my home, Judge. All right. And at my well, home in South Fulton, we'll Miss, I never, he never came there, okay? So if you don't Ms. come someplace, you can't live there. Ms. Wells, that's, I'm going to have to caution you. That's, that's going to be my the first time I have to caution you. We have to listen to the questions as asked. And if this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. Wow. Even the media mob, they were forced to admit that today was a complete disaster for Willis and her case against Donald Trump. Take a look. Don't let the legalese fool you. This is epic. This is monumental. If things are going in the direction we think uh, Fonnie Willis lied to the court, it's game over for her. She will be disqualified. It's a mess for the office, to be clear. Regardless of what the legality is, it is a mess for the office and something they're going to have to deal with. They're going to have to put in front of a jury that is seeing all this playing out. It might be appropriate for Ms. Willis to consider removing herself from this case now and turning the reins over to a senior official in the, in the district attorney's office and let him or her handle it. Because this is getting ugly and it's getting messy, and my guess is it's not going to get better. Now we kind of save the best part for last. This is Fonnie Willis as a candidate talking about this very issue and how Fulton County, Georgia residents deserve a DA that won't be hooking up with their employees. Take a look. 
because you're sitting with someone today that actually wants to make a difference because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket. I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. <laughs> Let me just say that. Now, earlier tonight, former President Trump, he did weigh in on the drama from today, telling Fox News that Fonnie Willis, well, quote, badly tainted, is badly tainted, and her case against him is a scam. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.